Hi, this is Steph from EverythingVintageSteph.com. That's my eBay store and my website where you can find me at EverythingVintageSteph.com. And if you go to EverythingVintageSteph.com, spelled with two F's instead of the PH, then you will get my blog. But I'm here today to show you my vintage video, I think it's number six, and we're going to be doing vintage cookbooks. This is where I store my vintage cookbooks that we'll get to in a minute. The, well, they're all cookbooks, some of them vintage, some of them not so vintage, but that's where I store my cookbooks. But while we're down here in the eBay basement, in the basement of Gilbertsville, Pennsylvania, I will show you also some things that I have in the basement, which is my entire clothing collection. <laughs> You won't be able to see it all, but just in this corner, in this little part, is maybe, what would you say, 30% of it? Yeah. Yeah, maybe not much more than 30%. But right now, an important thing that you might be looking for on eBay, besides your vintage cookbooks, is maybe sports items. It's baseball season. So I have stored here all my Phillies stuff. Phillies, Philly sweatshirts. Phillies shirts with players names on the back new Phillies items that uh, I'm also selling and then since we're near Philly we have flyers and Sixers in here I know they're not doing so great but okay we sell their stuff and when I find non Philly teams yes even the Cowboys there's a lot of Cowboy fans around here I don't know why we're not near Dallas but whenever I find those things, I also sell from other teams. But the reason that I sell a lot of Philly stuff, of course, is because I live near Philly and I find the Philly stuff. But people who don't live in Philly but are still Phillies fans, they don't find that stuff where they live. So they look to eBay to buy it because they can't find it in their area. If you live in L.A., you're not going to find Philly stuff there. You're going to find your own teams from L.A. So that's why I sell a pretty good amount of it, but of course whenever the team's doing better, then you sell more. Right now, I don't know. They are doing pretty good in the preseason down there in the uh, Grapefruit League as they call it. But we haven't started the regular season yet. Anyway, let's get to the vintage cookbooks. That was just a little bit of what's in my basement besides vintage cookbooks. When we talk about vintage, we want to look for the oldest ones we can find. Now, right now, this is the oldest one I have. It's not dated, but I'm pretty sure it's from the 1920s. It's called Home Economics. Not even really a cookbook, but some of the things you'll find in it are pretty hilarious. Housekeeping practices, cleaning practices, you know, for baby care. <laughs> and then there are a lot of recipes. But these older ones are really interesting. I just marked a, a, a couple of things that are in here. It tells you how to set your breakfast table, arrange the coffee service near the one who is to serve the coffee, place the coffee pot on a stand on the right side with the handle to the right. I mean, you have to set your coffee exactly right if you're living in the 1920s. And also for your luncheon and your dinner table, it tells you how to set your table exactly right, even how to place the handle on the coffee pot. Formal service. The waitress should be immaculate in appearance and quiet in her movements. She should come within easy reach of the table, but should not crowd between the people who are seated. Who has a waitress in their house today? I don't know, but this is household. This isn't for your restaurant uh, etiquette. And there's table etiquette just back here. Something under dairy products. Milk should always be kept covered. Did you know that? <laughs> of course, we get milk with lids on it today. But these are things that interesting things that you will find in your vintage cookbooks, your older ones. All these books are for sale on eBay right now, as long as they last. What I have here all together is the Betty Crocker vintage cookbooks. There are so many, they kind of look all the same. Oh, I just marked that. Easy, entertaining, Let's see. Good and easy cookbook. I think I have more than one, which is why I have the date written on there. Um, family dinners in a hurry. We have good and easy cookbook. These are probably from the 1950s, 60s. <coughs> and they also made some reproduction ones. They look exactly like the old ones, but they don't have the same spine on the side. 
and of course they look new and they will have the new date in here facsimile edition 2009 so don't be fooled that this is a vintage cookbook but it is the exact same thing that's in this one it's a reproduction though another pretty cool cookbook that is easy to find but it's an important one the lily wallace cookbook all american that looks like a yummy pie this is from the 19 uh 1949 i was going to say 1950s <laughs> but lily wallace was a home economics lecturer and writer and editor-in-chief of this book the lily wallace new american cookbook so that that's a good one cookbooks are you can find them from different parts of the country this is a west coast cookbook my part of the country we find the pennsylvania dutch cookbooks and along those lines are what we call the community and church cookbooks the ones where everybody from the church or the community contributes to it and then you have the person who contributed and their recipe these are really fun and they're usually really good recipes they're all you know down home kind of stuff uh they might miss an ingredient or two because you know it's not real professional but what i like to do is sell these in lots well this one i'm selling alone from the united lutheran church women of christ lutheran church in dryville pennsylvania but I have some others that are uh, the Philadelphia Orchestra cookbook that's more professional looking. But look how thick that is and all the people that contributed recipes for that. Like I want to make salmon loaf with canned salmon or molded melon salad. Maybe not. But then you have your uh, recipe books that um, are specific ingredient books. The apple cookbook, the mushroom cookbook the beef, the chicken, and all that sort of thing. The cupcake cookbook. This is a newer one. This isn't vintage. But these are the things that you can look for, new and vintage. And just cookbooks are just so interesting. One kind of cookbook that I don't think sells very well. I don't know. We're not that into microwave cooking anymore. I was at an auction the other week, and I got an entire box of microwave cookbooks, but... They're not ones that are very popular. But speaking of popular, this is one of the best. The Betty Crocker Pitcher Cookbook. It's big, it's thick. This one is probably from the 1950s and this one happens to be a first edition. It does say copyright 1950. Okay, it has all the tabs on the side. You can still buy these new and updated. But the older ones, they're very popular. And not just the Betty Crocker, though. The Better Homes and Gardens. I have right now four different versions of the Better Homes and Garden cookbook. This is the oldest one. And they have the distinctive red and white plaid cover. The older ones, see how the plaid goes across and down? And the newer ones, it's diagonal. If you're not looking at the date, you know, just by glancing at it, that's how you can tell the difference between the old ones and the new ones. Just because it says new doesn't mean it's new. This one says new. But those are that. And then there's the paperback version, which is smaller. And this one is the junior version. It's actually pretty cool. Here's a one page from it. Corny cornbread muffin surprises. You know, stuff that kids can make. So that is a quick look at some vintage cookbooks and regular cookbooks that you can find. A few other things that I have just quickly. I have three Rachel Rays. I'm selling those all together because, I don't know, it just makes more sense to sell them all together. If you're interested in the Rachel Ray cookbooks, very good. This one is Williamsburg cookbook. Not so vintage, but you know, it's from a certain particular area. Um, Better Home, oh, I didn't show this. This is actually older than the other ones. The Better Homes and Garden cookbook before they had the plaid cover. I should store that down with those so uh, I can find it easily. And just one more because I find this one a lot. 
I think I have two more somewhere else, but this one is listed the New York Times cookbook, probably 1960s, I think. <clears throat> not a lot of photos, not a lot of pictures, but uh, very good. And this is the international one. So when you are out and about finding your cookbooks, look for the date. It's usually behind the title pages where you'll find the date. And there are a lot of different editions of each one. So when you look at the date, the one that is the true date is the most recent one. Like if it says 1942, copyright, but this is the 1960 edition, it's the 1960 is how you want to uh, look at that. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my vintage video series. You might find some other vintage, you might find some other videos in there as well. And uh, check me out at everythingvintagestuff.com if you're interested in my eBay. And like my video, of course. Thank you.